Hello and welcome to the RAGS 1.2 tutorial. We're going to be talking about rooms now and what you can do with rooms in the RAGS designer. So we're kind of picking up our game from the point we left off at the first tutorial. So let's go ahead and click on the rooms tab. Let's explore our beginning room and destination room a little bit more. Let's start on the general tab here. So <clears throat> the beginning room consists, as you can see here, of a room name beginning room. Uh, the room ID, it's a unique ID assigned to each room and that's primarily used by RAGS internally so you probably won't ever need to use it directly. The room name override is actually uh, what will be displayed in the player while the game is running. If nothing is filled into your room name override, the room name itself will show up. But we could change the name of the beginning room if we want to. We'll just call it starting room here and um, so now when we're running rags it will show up as starting room but it's important to note one thing all of your commands are going to use the room name on top here the beginning room so for example if we look at the exits on the destination room it doesn't go to starting room it stays to beginning room so this is a way that you can just kind of keep track of all of your rooms and maybe a more organized way you might want to name your rooms for example um, mansion room bedroom one or mansion bedroom two something like that and then you can change the display name to something a little more pleasing to uh, the player that's a good way to keep track of things and organize games or rooms I mean so let's talk about room groups I don't think many people are familiar with what room groups really are and what they do what room groups are are a way to logically organize your rooms together. For example, if you have, oh, I don't know, say a, a large college university in your game, you may want to group all of the dormitories, dormitory rooms into a room group. I want to group all of the uh, actual school lecture halls in one group. So we could add a group here and we'll call it, oh, I don't know, house room. Okay, so we've created a room group called house room house room has the beginning room in it well, let's go ahead and put the destination room also in that group so there we go so there are conditions and commands that you can run in rags that will do essentially room group checks for example is the player in the house room room group so we'll get into that a little more later but I just wanted to touch on that briefly here over here we have the description it's uh, fairly self-explanatory. And over here are our room pictures. We have a room pick and a layered room pick. Now typically the layered room picks are used for either transparent GIF images to overlay or if you have an animated GIF they would play in your layered room pick. So let's go ahead and add some pictures to our rooms here real quick. Let's see if I can do this here. Let's dive into our sample pictures here. We'll have a sea turtle room and an antelope room. Let's go ahead and add those. So what I just did was imported some multimedia. And they are pictures in this case. So if we click on them, you'll see them come up here in your preview window. All you have to do for your rooms is click on your initial room pick and we'll make the beginning room the sea turtle room and our destination room the antelope room. So, I mean, this is sort of nonsense, but it gives you an idea of how you can define some rooms in your game, at least. Now, if you use the layered room pick, just to show you what could go wrong, you have a green sea turtle. What your player will actually see during the game is the sea turtle, because it's going to completely overlay the antelope, because it's not transparent. So we're going to just leave the layered room pick at none. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our game now and see what's changed here. We'll do a quick debug session. Pull that into our field of view, and what you see is we're in the sea turtle room. This is our beginning test room. Let's go ahead and uh, set this back to normal. Okay, we'll go north. Now we're in the antelope or destination room. Pretty exciting. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. What I'd like to do now is add a room. So let's walk through the steps. We're going to add Western Room. Okay, so the Western Room 
is going to go um, from the destination room. We'll go west, we'll make it initially active to the western room. So now you get prompted with, would you like the destination room to link back to this room? We'll say yes for now. And what that does is, when you look at the western room, going east will take you to the destination room. So that'll link you back and forth. All right, so that's how that works. We've added a room. Let's go ahead and add a, a quick description. A western room. Okay. And let's go ahead and find a picture for that as well. Um, oh, I don't know. What do we got? A waterfall. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going to make this the waterfall room. There we go. And so we're done there. Now let's talk about these exit tabs briefly here for a moment. The exit tabs have um, initially active, all right? So what that means is as soon as the game is running, this exit is active. You can dynamically turn these exits on or off, basically opening or closing those exits as you play the game. You can also select your destination rooms. So if we wanted to, say, from the western room, be able to go up and go back to the start, the beginning room, uh, we'll say no this time. It's not active, so we'll never see that in the designer unless we explicitly set it while we're running the game. So right now there's an exit, but you'll never see it in the player. And I said don't link back. So if we go back here, you would expect to see down linking back normally, but right now nothing links back. So it's a one-way room is what we've created essentially. Let's go ahead and turn that on just for the fun of it. Now, the door or portal object. Now, that solves a very specific problem. If you want a door to open or activate an exit to a room, for example, if you want a door to lead from the western room to the destination room because they're linked together, you could put the object in here if we had one created, a door object essentially. And what that would do is let that object exist in both rooms. So when you're in the destination room or the western room, you would still see that object, the door. Because that kind of makes sense, obviously. Um, if there's a door or some weird warped portal that you step through, you'd like to be able to see it from both sides and go through it. So that's what the door portal object is for. Let's talk about objects and custom properties in a room. With this tab, you can drop your objects into your room so that they'll show up. Otherwise, if you create objects in our object library over here, they won't actually show up unless you dynamically move them around during the game, or if you drop an object into the room. So let's go ahead and create a quick object. I'm just going to go quickly over the basic object creation here. Um, as you'll see, we're going to create um, I don't know, basketball. So we have a basketball. We'll give it a description. We'll go over to the actions, which I'll talk about soon. We'll add some default actions. There we go. So let's go ahead and stick that in our destination room. All you have to do is just drag and drop. That's all there is to it. You can also click the Assign Objects button if you wanted to and assign them that way, but it's much quicker to just drag and drop. So now the destination room contains a basketball. We have custom properties here as well. What custom properties do is basically let you set attributes or properties to all your rooms. and You can change the value. So for example, if you had, say, a vampire game you were working on, you want to know if this room is outside. We'll set the default property to false. You can set it to whatever you'd like. Outside equals false. Um, and that set it for all of your objects. So if you wanted the western room, for example, to be outside, you could change that to true, click update property, and look at that. The western room outside is now true. Destination room is still false, beginning room is false. So you can do those sorts of things. You can add pretty much whatever you'd like. It doesn't have to be a text or a boolean, uh, anything you want. Um, let's think of something else. Maybe you'd want to know if a room has been searched. We'll set the default to false on all of these. We can add those. Then during your game, if someone searches a room, you could set that custom property to true so you don't 
do your special searching logic again, but we'll talk about that later. It's just a brief introduction on how these things work. Now we get into really the heart of the matter, the Actions tab. And this is really what makes RAGS work. The Actions tab, you briefly saw me in the objects create some actions, default actions on our basketball object. What you see first on almost all of your rooms or characters or objects, whatever you're creating actions on, have events. These two less than and two greater than characters indicate events. So for example, in the beginning room, if you want certain actions to run the very first time the player enters the room, you can do that here under the commands on success. If you want something to happen each and every time a player enters the room, you can put the commands here. And conversely, we have on player leave first time and on player leave. So you can do all of these events and they will run for each room. Okay, so let's get into the heart of the matter, the actual actions that the player will see. So if you right click, you have one default action for rooms right now. You click, click on that and you can see that you have an examine command now. Let's see what that does exactly. If we look at the commands on success, there's two rags commands that were created here. The first one is room display description beginning room. So that essentially will just display this description. Let's just add the word description here. You'll see it. Let's go back to our actions. The other action is it will display the picture beginning room. So since we do have a picture assigned to this room, it will show up. Let's see if that's actually the picture. It is. Okay, it's the big sea turtle. So that's great. But let's go ahead and make up our own action because that's really where the fun comes in. So what action might someone do on a room? Let's see. How about search? Okay, so search. We'll just do a real basic command right now. We'll say, I'm sorry but you didn't find anything. So it's a, essentially a worthless command, but it's there. Someone can search. Now what we might want to do, if you remember over here, we created a custom property called searched. By default, it's false. Why don't we go ahead and set that searched property to true. So we will do rat room. We're in a room object. Set custom property room property we want to set the current room searched we're going to set it to equal true now if we want to get real fancy I'm gonna go ahead and do this if this is a bit over your head don't worry we're gonna go over this again a few times but what we're going to do is add a condition a condition is essentially a true or false check of the rag system we're going to make this condition have we searched the room. Okay? And that's, I use such a descriptive name just for my sake so I, I kind of know what I'm looking at. So, what we're going to check here is our room custom property. Okay? We're going to check the current room searched value. If it equals true, we're going to say you've already searched. So, when a condition gets evaluated by the RAGS engine, if it's true, we'll go to commands on success. If we don't pass the check, everything goes into commands on failure. So what I'm going to do here is just add a simple command, hey, you've already searched this room. Okay, but now we've got these commands down here. If you uh, start programming in rags and change your mind on how you want to do things, it's very, very easy to fix what you're doing. You just click, drag, and drop. So I just moved these commands into the commands on failure. So here we're setting the custom property to true, and we'll say, I'm sorry, but you didn't find anything. The next time we click the search command, we'll get this message. Okay? So let's go ahead and do some testing here and see how this works. Let's run it. 
we go. I'm going to minimize our debug data form and I'll pull this into our frame of view. Okay, so here you'll see we added beginning test room description. You'll see a green bar around our room thumbnail. Now what this means is we have commands on this room. So if you right click on it, you can examine. It does exactly what we showed in the command form. If we do our search command, we'll say, I'm sorry, but you didn't find anything. So now what should have happened is we've set our custom property, so if we search again, we'll get the new message. Hey, you've already searched in this room, so it's working. Let's go ahead and go north, and you can see there's a basketball out here on the uh, sand dunes by the antelope. Let's examine that. It's an orange basketball. We'll go ahead and take it. You can also drop it. Now if you saw, those commands were default commands. It provides a good deal of functionality. Let's go ahead and take that basketball and we'll head to our new room, the western room. Here's the western room. We can go back to the destination room. Now you'll notice we turned on the up signal that will take us back to the starting room. Let's go ahead and do that. Took us back to the starting room. You'll see the name starting room here, even though the description says beginning room. That's because our name override. You'll notice we can't go down to get back to that room. It's a one-way exit that we created. Let's go ahead and close this. So everything seems to be working well. Uh, let's talk about the actions for a moment here. You see we have a condition in here, and we have some root command on success and command on failure actions. We've got a conditional behavior that affects the action. We have a run all, pass on any success, and a stop on first fail command. So that stop on first fail means if we fail any condition in our action, we will run the commands that are in the commands on failure. If we have run all, pass on any success, we can do all our condition checks and the commands on success will run all the time. Now this, in the earlier RAGS versions, used to be very important. The newer RAGS versions will let us nest as many conditions as we want under commands on failure and commands on success. This has become much less important, but it's still important to note if things are acting a little funny, it might have something to do with this if you're using your commands on failure in the base. Most people don't use that anymore. Uh, it may get deprecated as uh, if there's really no need for it, and uh, I haven't really had to use that for quite a while now. But it's important to know. Now let's look at our additional input commands. What additional input lets you do is if someone, for example, clicks on your search action and you need input from the customer, you can either have a, a list of objects get displayed, a list of characters, a list of text. Well, it's not a list of text. It'll be a text box that the user can type into. Objects or characters, both, will show up or you can do custom or your inventory. So most of those are fairly self-explanatory, but let's go ahead and click on, let's go ahead and create a new object. Okay, let's, or a new action, I'm sorry. Let me get talk to. Which room are we in? The beginning room, okay. So we'll go ahead and make it custom, because that's the most interesting one. If you want custom input, you give it a title. Who should you whoop, talk with? I can't spell. There we go. So, yourself is one of our choices. Let's add another choice. Sea turtle. There we go. So, what we're going to do on this command, so as soon as I click this action, we're going to pop up a little menu. Who should you talk with, yourself or the sea turtle? So let's go ahead and see what the uh, player has chosen. So let's add a condition. Let's see. Did they talk to themselves? Let's go ahead and see that. There's a conditional check in here called additional data check. Which choice should the user make? Yourself. So. <clears throat> Oops, let me pull that back in here. What just happened there? Get in there, you.
Let's go ahead and add a command in here. We'll drag him down. Okay. So if you've talked to yourself, let's go ahead and say really shouldn't be that. people will talk. There we go. So <clears throat> what we have here is if they talk to you, we're going to check and see did they pick yourself? If they did, we're going to give them a funny little message. If they did not, let's go ahead and add a new condition. This is how you can nest your conditions. Sea turtle. There we go. So we have a condition in the commands on failure. This will be, condition will be additional data check. Did they choose the sea turtle? If so, let's say the sea turtle smiles at you and winks. There we go. So that's, we'll get rid of this blank command here. So that's how you can use these additional inputs. Now one other thing I wanted to mention, I kind of skipped over the selected action initially active. If you don't want this talk to to initially be active, that means the player won't see this command. You turn that off. Okay? So we're going to leave that command off until say the player has done a search. So as soon as they search Let's go ahead and add a command in here to turn that action on. So let's go ahead and add our command. Uh, there we go. So we're going to say in rooms, because we're in a room object, set action. There we go. Set action active or inactive. So we're going to pick our beginning room. We're going to set the action. If we find it in here, talk to is active. Okay. So now the player will have to search this room before they could talk to anybody. Let's go ahead and run that real quick and we'll see how that goes. Okay, once again we'll minimize our debug data form. We'll pull this in so you can see it. So here we are in the beginning room. Let's go ahead and right click and I'd like you to note we can only examine our search. Okay, let's go ahead and search. All right, so that search should have activated an additional command on our room object. Let's see if it did. There we go. Talk to. As soon as you click talk to, you'll see who should you talk with? Yourself or a sea turtle? Let's go ahead and talk to ourselves first. We really shouldn't be doing that. People talk. Good. Let's go ahead and talk to the sea turtle. You can also double click on your choice if you'd like to. Sea turtle smiles at you and winks. So there we go. Everything's working. If we search again, it says you've already searched this room. So we can go north and west and up. And everything's working. So that's all I wanted to cover for the room. Uh, we did a lot on our actions, but the actions are so important it's worth the time. Please stay in tune and we'll talk about the player and we can go a little quicker over the actions next time. Thank you.